It's week six and we're into the back half of the 2022 Texas high school football regular season. Welcome into Friday Night Lights. I'm Curtis Quillen and I'm Matt Lively. We'll hear from Nicole Sheridan in just a minute. This week we have a showdown for a playoff seating or potentially a spot in just the second week of district play. And as hard as that might be to believe, District 8 2A Division 1 is the greater Waco area. It's absolutely loaded with five, maybe even six teams, Matt, vying for just four playoff spots. Yeah, absolutely. And although the picture looks different than we thought it might already, these teams come in differently and know tonight is crucial in the grand scheme of things. Cougars recognizing their 2002 state championship squad tonight in this one out in Travis as Riesel comes rolling in to face the mighty Rosebud Lock Cougars. Homecoming game tonight as well. So let's get this one to kick off. A new rivalry could be forming. And here it is, sitting at two and two. The Cougars start the second half, trailing by three. Kyle Finnan takes a snap, finds Jamarcus Johnson, who does the rest down the left sideline. That's a house call. It's 21-17 Cougars after the PAT. But the Indians answer right back. Quarterback Peyton Holsher. Looking to get out of trouble, connects with senior receiver Santana Cisneros. As he stumbles into the house, it's 24-21 Riesel. Back and forth we go. Cougars say not so fast. Run game wakes up. Finn in there on the keeper. Cougars finish the drive with the quick snap. There's Finn in on the keeper. That's another tutty. It ends the third. Rosebud lot up 28-24. Let's go to a final. All Cougars from there. 42-24. They're winners tonight. Look, guys, we have to acknowledge something. Matt, yeah. you gave up something this week. Yeah, I gave up that front row seat. This is weird for me being in studio, but for the second week in a row, Nicole, Nicole Sheeran got a front row seat out there, and she's got a happy team behind her. Two, one. <laughs> Guys, I told you this was a budding rivalry, and I'm telling you right now, this is just the start of a very fun matchup in Falls County. 42 to 24 win. Rosebud Lot takes home week six game of the week trophy. Congrats, guys! They're really excited. All right, come here, coach. Come here, coach. All right, coach. So I want to ask you a couple questions. You won your first district game of the season. How does that feel? It feels amazing. After everything these guys have been through, after everything these guys have been through, to bounce back after last week, and uh, we had several different times tonight where we got down. We were, we were trailing at halftime. Uh, plenty of opportunities to fold up the tent, and the character of these young men just—it came through, and that's why I love them and love to coach these guys. And you told me earlier this week before the game that the run game was key. What did you see from that tonight? We answered a lot of questions. We were outsized in a lot of areas, and. Um, we were able to kind of take advantage of the outside and then also run in between the tackles, which is something, a key that we wanted to be able to do against any opponent. And um, that, that's, a, that's a tribute to these guys who were kind of, like I said, giving up 30, 40 pounds at every position. And uh, for them to come off low and do what they did is amazing. Definitely. And Kyle, Kyle, where are you? Come here, Kyle. All right, Kyle. You had a great game tonight. Tell me about your run game. I mean, you pushed that ball through for touchdowns. Tell me how that felt. Feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Feel good. Hey. And how are you hoping to carry that over into your next matchup? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do it again and again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you heard the guy. They're going to do it again and again. This is just the start for this team, their first district win in the books. And he just kissed the trophy. You can tell they're really excited. So back to you guys. <laughs> Halfway through the regular season for the Cougars, 3-2 and two is not a bad way to Love be. Love it. Brandon Hicks has a good bunch out there. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, yes, in that same district, and I'm being very serious, the Moody Bearcats. Matt, for the first time since the final two weeks of the 2019 season, Moody won a district game last week. Yeah, the Bearcats have won three straight after last week's 10-6 win over Valley Mills. Bearcats with a daunting test tonight, visiting Marlin. Moving towards the squad, coming fresh off a shutout at Bosqueville. It's a Marlin Moody faceoff as teams are looking for its second straight district win of the season. Bulldogs start off strong. QB Desmond Wooden Jr. Hello, he takes the snap, looks downfield, and it's Amari and Lofton all the way to the house for six on the third snap of the game. Bulldogs up seven. Nothing. Marlin keeps pushing. Woodson takes the snap, throws left. Lawson once again, he's a former player of the week, doing what he does best, going, going, going. Finally forced out, 
inches from the end zone. The Bulldogs finish as Woodson takes the snaps, hands it off to running back Mario Hopwood. He walks it into the end zone. In the first quarter, it was 14 to nothing. Bulldogs, they would roll them. 61-7, I believe. Or I think that's what the final. Yeah, 61-7 is your final. Axel hosting Karens in district action tonight. This game going to half as I pulled up. So sorry, no, no highlights for you. But we do have a final score. Longhorn win this one, 28-21. Okay, the past couple of days have been quite dark in the town of McGregor. The Bulldogs are still in shock after he's shooting just a couple of blocks on the north end of their campus, left five people dead. It's been an emotional 36 hours in the town since, and understandably so. Tonight, though, the community came together to support one another. Bulldogs hosting Troy tonight in a game that we truly weren't sure would happen tonight after canceling all the sub varsity games last night. McGregor players wore a few patches on their helmets for the five victims and fans had a moment of silence pregame as well in a needed community moment. It was the Sebastian Torres show in the first half. The sophomore running back here finishes the drive from three yards out. P18 no good. McGregor on the board first. It's six nothing. Troy would answer though. Senior tailback Corey Gibson stumbles in from a yard out. Trojans go up one, seven, six. PATs, they're important. Second quarter now, Trojans looking for a spark on offense. They get one from Cooper Valley, bounce him to the right side, cuts back inside, breaks ankles on this run. 51 yard house call. Trojans go up 14 12 there, but the dogs are not done barking. Torres with another short score here. He punches it in. Three touchdowns in the first half alone. Bulldogs go into the half up 21 14, but it's Troy. That gets the win on the scoreboard. 27-24 is your final. We have so much more Friday Night Lights ahead. Don't go away. Up next, we'll jump onto Class 6A.
All right, Temple has been one of the most battle-tested teams in the area this season, but last week made a statement in the District 12 6A opener. The Wildcats got a big-time road win at Bryan. Now they can move to 2-0 and oh in District with a win over the District's more up-and-coming squads. The Blue Front White Back Magic hosting Pflugerville Weiss tonight. That's the same Wolf squad that tested Harker Heights last week. Allison Dixon, everybody's favorite Templeite. Doing the coin toss tonight. Temple started off with an impressive defensive possession. Kamarion Carter, a huge sack here. Following play, the Wolves punting and oh, it's blocked. Nathan Mitchell, the recovery. That's six without running a play on offense. PAT is good. It's seven nothing. Temple just like that. In the second quarter, it's all Wolves though. Jax Brown on the drive here for Weiss, finding Micah Gifford over the middle. That's a touchdown on the slant route, and it's 7-7 just like that. A few plays later, Jax Brown going back to the air. One if by land, two if by throw. Jax Brown, Jaron Brown. I wonder if they're related, Matt. That's another touchdown. Wolves up 13-10 at the half. It is 25-19. Cats right now in the fourth quarter. Apt observation there, Kurt. Here's a fun win. Midway off its first win visiting Harker Heights tonight at Club Buck. Jerry Edwards looking for another district win and to spoil Shane Anderson's birthday. Second half, 10-6 Heights. The Knights were just all over them. Ramon Conway catches it clobbered by defenders. A few plays later, Junior Thornton looking to keep it and is swallowed up by defenders. Now they've got a fourth down. Thornton looking to pass in and out of the hands of Darwin Parker. Good stand by the Knights. They go on to win 24-13. That was a close one at Leo Buckley. We've still got so much more Friday Night Lights ahead. Up next, we'll talk 5A, but as we go to break, let's listen to the winner of this week's Battle of the Bands. It's the Red Brigade of Harker Heights. More Friday Night Lights straight ahead.
Straight Talk in 5A, one of the top games in the state in that classification this week, taking place down in Bastrop County. Straight down Highway 95, a little more than an hour from where we stand. Yeah, Belton is 3-2, and two, but a really good 3-2, and two, even if trading off wins for losses this season. Can the Tigers string a couple wins together? Belton visiting right. Elgin tonight, facing a resurging Wildcat squad. Gotta say, Corey Moose, he's got the good camera out there. Teacher Appreciation Night, Belton going here to Slade LeBlanc for the TD. 7-0 Tigers. Can Elgin respond? Uh, you betcha. They come back big time with a deep shot of their own. Looking, looking, takes the hit. hit. He, yeah, he stood in there. Justin Strong, the captain, dragged down this one. Belton would force a fumble on the next one, but we're not there yet. Almost a horse collar. That would have been a horse collar. Yeah. So Elgin Down at the one. just getting in there, but then Belton forces the fumble on the next play. It's a strip sack. This poor QB is taking a beating. It gives them the ball back, leads to a field goal, and it is the Belton Tigers coming on top 28 to 6. Division 1 now staying in 5A. Lake Belton hosting Cleburne tonight at Tiger Field. How long do you think until they change the name there? <laughs> Barn burner that is District 4, 5A D1. Scoreless game just underway. Chris Radcliffe, a big fan of the open shots. And it's the Bronco defense coming up big here. That's a pick. Simon Bridges, great play. And the Broncos knocking on the door. That sets up Connor Cruz, calls his own number. My man, into the end zone, 7-0 Lake Belton after that QB draw. They are fully in control this evening. Cleburne would actually block a field goal. Yes, there is a Cleburne highlight in a game that I'm going to show you is how is a very lopsided affair. They blocked the field goal here to stop the next drive for the Broncos, but all home team in this one. 37-0 Lake at the half. They go on win 58-24. We are still just revving up the engines here on Friday Night Lights. After the break, we're heading back to our game of the week.
We always say it. We love front row seats here on Six Sports. And what a game to be front and center at. Final score. 42 to 24, Rosebud Lott takes home their first district win of the season. We said it from the beginning, it was an even matchup going into it, and that is exactly what we got tonight. Now, I have to say, it shows a lot about a team like Rosebud Lott, who had two shutout losses so far this season, to come and put 42 points on the board and take home the victory tonight. Now, tonight, we saw a lot from the run game from this team. Kyle Finan and Jamarcus Johnson switch off at the QB slot. And Kyle Finan ran it in for a few touchdowns tonight, so it shows a lot about a team to come together and show that leadership up out here to get over those shutout losses and have a big win tonight. But you know what? That's going to do it for the NBC portion. We'll see you on the live stream. More than there are in here because that's where they Welcome into the live stream portion of our show. I'm your traffic cop, Curtis Quinlan, alongside Matt Lively. We will hear from Nicole Sheeran in just a moment. Matt, District 8 2A Division 1 is a fun one. Yeah, both reigning regional finalists, Marlin and Crawford, Bosqueville, Rosebud Lot in a three drop down resale, and that's not even all of it. District 8 2A D1, that is the Greater Waco area's 2A D1 district. It's absolutely loaded. Five, maybe six teams, including that former 3A uh, third rounder in resale vying for four playoff spots. And although the picture looks different than we thought it might already, these teams come in differently and know tonight is crucial in the grand scheme of things. 
Nice. The Cougars recognizing their 2002 state championship squad tonight in this one. It was also homecoming night at Cougar Stadium. So what better night to honor your state titled squad from 20 years ago? A new rivalry could be forming in this one as well. These two teams separated by maybe 20 minutes of driving. And then the second half, it's 17-14 Riesel. And the Cougars start the half with this. Kyle Finan. Taking the snap, finding Jamarcus Johnson hugs the left sideline. That's a house call for six. It's 21 17 Rosebud at that point. The Indians <laughs> answer right back. Peyton Holscher finding senior receiver Santana Cisneros as he stumbles into the end zone. That gives the Indians the lead 24 21. Cougars say not so fast. They're channeling their inner league corso. The run game wakes up. He finds a terrific first down, and then it's Feenan. Finishing the drive with another Cougar touchdown to end the third quarter. It is 28-24 Rosebud Lot. All Cougars from there. 42-24 is your final. Uh, Nicole Sheeran. I don't whoever gives her these front row seats, man. Yeah, I'm pretty generous guy, Nicole. I hope you liked it out there. I would have <laughs> loved to have been there, but thanks so much. I hope you had a good time. That's really all that matters. I had a great time. I'm sorry, Matt. I stole your thunder on this one, but I got to say, we've just had such great luck with our game of the weeks and what a game to have a front row spot at. I mean, I said this was a budding rivalry and I am just so excited to see what happens from here with these two teams. But we got to talk about Rosebud Lot and the fact that this is a squad who has faced two shutout losses so far this season, comes into tonight, puts 42 points on the board. We said it was an even matchup going into tonight. Both teams sit at two and two on the season. And that's exactly what we got. But the Cougars absolutely ran away with the victory in the second half. And when I say run, I mean run literally. Their run game was on fire tonight. Kyle Finan and Jamarcus Johnson both played at the quarterback slot tonight. And Kyle just, he ran it in for multiple touchdowns, showing the Riesel Indians what it was all about here tonight. Coach Hicks said he was proud of his team for the leadership he saw out there. The fact that these guys could rally together to get over those tough losses that they faced and get a win out here tonight in Falls County. I mean, it was an electric atmosphere, and I'm sorry, Matt, but a great front row seat to have tonight. <laughs> Did you have a wedding proposal, Nicole? That's what I want to know. Was there someone who dropped down? The guy on gets me? one proposal and it goes <laughs> straight to his head. I'm just I'm saying. I'm surprised it can fit I'm in the frame saying. at this point. Seriously, I, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nicole, we'll check back in with you for Gridiron Player of the Week in just a bit. Let's talk District 11, 3A Division 1, because. Well, we have to every Friday. It's an absolute hornet's nest. The Academy Bumblebees, speaking of, had an up and down start to the season. After starting 0-2, rather surprisingly, the Bumblebees have turned it on, winning three straight over Hillsborough, Salado, and Troy last week in the district opener. Can they make the statement they have strived to do for two years? Bees hosting Lorena in District 11 3A Division 1, and a couple of great coaches in this one. They just want to scratch that itch. And See what I did why. there? See what I did there? That's Chris Radcliffe all over that. First quarter, Leopards down 7 0. Lorena's Kaysen Taylor punches it in. Leopards go for two. They would miss it. It's 7 6 Bumblebees. Second quarter now, the great fan base. Second quarter now, Kaysen Taylor gets the call again and he emerges out of the huge hole just following blockers and no one's going to catch him. Seven more points for the Leopards as they now take the lead. And Lorena did not want to stop there. QB, Jackson Generals, great QB name by the way, all-timer, calls his own number just before the half point after would fail. 19-13 Leopards at the half. Lorena pulls away in this one. They go on to win 40-17. That's a first team All-State name team there. Right yeah, there. big time. Jackson Generals. Rockdale off its by hosting Franklin as the Tigers aim to snap a three-game skid. There are worse ways to come out of the bye, but I'm not sure what they are. Tigers kick the scoring off with a handoff to Tim Grice, who flies past everyone for the TD. 6-0 after the missed PAT, and Tigers are growling their way through this one. That was bad. I'll see myself yeah, out. Lions score right back, though, off the muff kickoff. I, E.K. Eaton is going to get this one, take it all the way in for a score, and Franklin's up 14-6. This one's actually extremely tight through the first half. We go to the second quarter now, fourth down and five for the Tigers when they bring out the trickeration. Robert Owens to wide receiver DeAndre Stepper. Woo. Jeff Grimes Jeff calling these plays? Apparently, because yeah. it's 14-13, just like that. Franklin, you know the Lions have an answer. They're number one 
in 3A Division One for a reason. There's Jacob Campsey making his adjustments, and here's this. Here's the next long TD run for the Lions. Colin Smitherman, uh, the closest defender, was still in Milano. 21-13 at that point. 10 seconds to go in the half. Lions are in the red zone, and they're going to go play action after we uh, see some excited Lions fans. Play action to perfection. Court Lowry to Landon Lawrence. That's a huge score. That pushes the lead to two scores, 28-14 at that point. All Franklin in the second half, 63-42, high scoring game. Mart hosting Heiko in a district home opener. Panthers have not lost a district game since October 23rd, 2015. Shouts if you can tell me who they lost to that night. First quarter, Panthers already out to a 22-0 lead. First play of the drive, it's Jonah Ross going for it all, finding Brandon Lundy. 53 yards on the pitch and catch, and yeah, 29-0 Mart after one. Heiko playing with just 15 total players tonight. Yes, total. It's Ross on the keeper from the one. 36 nothing at that point. All Panthers all night. It is 78 nothing is your That's final. abuse. That's abuse. That shouldn't be allowed. All right, moving on. Coppers Cove out of the bye hosting Bryant tonight at the Southern House. That RG3 built first quarter. Vikings going through the air. Great defense by the Bulldog defender Malik Davis puts the Vikings on the rope. Fourth down here at goal. They line up three to the left, so of course they throw right. Touchdown. Vikings on the board, 7-0. Next drive, Vikings looking for more through the air. Jalen Thomas coming in out of nowhere. Hello, great breakup. Revis Island wow. out there. Unfortunately, it wasn't like that all night for Tony Johnson's squad. They end up falling 49-20 to to the Vikings. All right. Now it's time for our favorite part of the show. It is our Gridiron Player of the Week. Matt, each week, yeah. we have a really good one. Yeah, we recognize one outstanding performance. This week, we head to Midway High School, where one player gave six different sparks to the Panthers' first win. Nicole Sheeran is live from Rosebud Lot to explain. Have you ever seen a player who plays quarterback, running back, and wide receiver all in one? Well, the Midway Panthers have one of their own. His name's Junior Thornton, and that is why he wins our Gridiron Player of the Week this week. My mindset going this game is win. win. No, if I make mistakes, just it's a mistake. You good, just win. Midway did just that on Friday night. Junior Thornton played every role on that field to bring the Panthers to their first big district win quarterback, wide receiver, and running back all in one. Just the total offensive package that he brought to the table, running and throwing, and then he even had a receiving touchdown there on the fake punt. So, you know, it was a great night for him, great night for the Midway Panthers. Three running touchdowns, another two from the quarterback slot, and one 43-yard catch. But one carry stunned the entire crowd. Miracles happened on that field last Friday. It was one play. We all ran to the left, we went to the right, we all ran all into the right. He gonna pull out, ain't nobody was up to pull out running for the whole touchdown, about 70 yard touchdown. That's something crazy I've never seen before. After starting this season as a receiver, Coach Anderson knew it was time for a change. He's done a great job the last two weeks and then he's got, you know, we've gotten big time production out of him. And so, you know, like I said, he, him at quarterback makes the Midway Panthers better. Thornton's skills are unique and it takes a certain kind of mentality to be a triple threat. It was fun. We just, whatever I need to do for us to win, I was going to do it. But what goes through his head to have that kind of performance? Well, it's simple. I just be thinking about winning. I don't think about nothing else but winning. If you're looking for a quarterback who can throw downfield, sprint the sideline, and catch winning touchdowns, well, Midway has one of its own. Oh, with him running the ball, you need to watch out for that. Because when you get the ball going, when these starts going, you can't stop him. That's all I got to say. I ain't seen nobody like him, so he's special, real special. Now, the Midway Panthers may have fallen to Harker Heights tonight, but Junior Thornton is a special player, and I'm just excited to watch him absolutely thrive this season, guys. He was a big key. He was a big key in that win over Hutto last week. Huge. When I saw Shane Anderson one night before that game, he was scouting Harker Heights down at Weiss. 
He said it was time for a change. Junior Thornton, clearly a really good choice. And yeah, they couldn't get it done tonight, but Harker Heights, I mean, they're an impressive yep. squad, and you don't expect to get a win with the kind of rebuild that Midway's going through. Right, and Shane Anderson is very is, is a smart coach. He's in Midway for a reason. If something's not working, whether it's his idea or somebody else's, he's not afraid to scrap that, throw it away, yeah. and move on to something else. All right, Nicole, just give us a minute. We'll see you right back here in about 90 seconds for big picture. 5A scores tonight. It's Midlothian all over Colleen, 43-20, and Ellison takes down Waco High 24 to 6. Shoemaker and Schaffer, or sorry, Shoemaker and the Red Oak Hawks. It's Red oh. Oak coming out on top. And then Pflugerville, 29 nothing over Schaffer. I cannot overstate how big that Red Oak result is. That creates an absolute mess at the top of District <laughs> 4, 5A Division 1. That's three teams now with one district loss. Uh, La Vega, 42-14 over Yoakum on the road tonight, and it's Gatesville edging Mineral Wells on the road, 30 to 29. How about Waxahachie taking on Robinson? Whoa, Mike Ludlow's squad getting a 35-28 win. Salado, we do not have that because it is tomorrow. They're facing Hitchcock, the Bulldogs. Connolly all over Springtown ends a two-game skid for the Cadets as they uh, spike the Porcupine, 45-27. Uh, China Spring all over San Antonio Cornerstone tonight, 49-16. Watch out for those Cougs. West all over Dallas Life Oak, 63 to seven, and Whitney gets a big 61-14. Those Dallas schools not enjoying Central Texas much. Not at all. Uh, how about Teague with a district win over Eustace, 37-17 tonight. Mahea, welcome to the left side of your record, 28-21. The best 0-5 team in the states becomes 1-5. About time, season. we like to see it. All right, San Saba getting absolutely blown out, 49 to nothing. That one's tough. Goldwick, they take a loss as well to Deleon, 44 to 19. Moving on in 2A, it's Bosqueville all over Bruce Villetti on the road tonight, 49-7, and it's Crawford all over its rivals from 10 minutes north in Valley Mills, 48-7 the final. And then Thorndale taking a loss to Flatonia, 37-13 in District 13, 2A Division 1. You'll notice not a lot of scores here. It is the biggest bye week in the state of Texas. Uh, how about the new number one in 1A Division 1, the Abbott Panthers, the fight in Willie Nelson, 46-0 over Borden County last night. That is a powerhouse Borden County squad on a neutral. They, that game did not go past halftime. And then it's uh, Jonesboro all over Austin Hill Country tonight, 81-35. And then we got Bynum and Aquila, 60. <laughs> Dude, is this a basketball score? 98-66. What six we, man football? What are we doing here? And then Oglesby, you know I like them Tigers, 64 to 14. They get a win over Gustine. Bishop Riker takes a 13-6 lead, falls to Dallas First Baptist in a district matchup, 46-27. And the Lions of CTCS come roaring back with a 34-28 win to snap a skid in South Temple. Live Oak takes a huge loss to Lubbock Kingdom Prep, 72-28. And we do not have a score for Holy Trinity in Castle Hills just yet. Eagle Christian, 74-28 was the score last night. Uh, and then Arlington St. Paul. Blanks Parkview tonight in Waco, Whoa. 60 to nothing. All right, this is my favorite part of the show. This is big picture. This is big picture. And unlike the past couple of weeks, because somebody had to go to freaking Iowa. Hold on, there was a game there I was covering. I was not on vacation. If Jim Heiss is watching at home, I do not leave every weekend to go on vacation. I do occasionally <laughs> work. It is in the job title. It is what you paid me for. He is so. not Bailey Bates. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, whoa. Let's right, get Dusty here. Let's All get right. to it. All right, guys. Um, Nicole, let's start with you. Most impressive result tonight. Well, most impressive result when when you said, well, okay, sorry. Most impressive result, I would say, was the game I'm at right here. Rosebud Lott scoring 42 points on the board and absolutely running down the Indians in the second half tonight. No bias by the fact that it's our game of the week and that I was here, but I'm impressed by their performance tonight. I'm kind of inclined to say Rosebud Lott there. Um, th it's going to be a tough road to hoe for Riesel to get into uh, the playoff picture now with that loss because you got to figure that Marlin and Crawford are going to finish 1-2 in that district. Yep. And then I'm going to say if Bosqueville can put it together with the offensive line, Bosqueville Rosebud Lot becomes for the three seed. But if Bosqueville can't figure it out up front, then who else is in there? Can Riesel climb back in or can Moody somehow find its way in there? Because I got to tell you, yes, it was against Heiko and it was against Valley Mills, who has kind of disappointed us this season, but 
they haven't exactly looked bad against those teams. They've not, but my most impressive game tonight was Marlin, who beat they, the snot out of. They beat Moody. Moody. They just absolutely annihilated Moody. Desmond Woodson Jr. was all over the board tonight. He was a former player of the week, and he's hooking, hooking up with Zamari and Lofton, another former player of the week. I mean, Marlin's just so talented. It was only going to be a matter of time before they finally got rolling. Ruben Torres is too good of a coach to let them flatline. Marlins turned it on. I think that we've now seen the beginning of what is going to be a very strong district play for them. I can hear you. They had one of the toughest three-game non-district schedules in the state. Yeah. And, I mean, you look at, well, they're 0-3, okay. But when you look at who they played in those three games, you have to figure they're going to figure it out come district play. Could I interest you guys... I, I love some small school football. But you? How, I know. Shocking, oh, okay. right? All right. My most impressive result this week was last really? night. It was Shocker. Abbott. We don't have video of it. 46 nothing over Borton County. Guys, this Abbott team can win a state championship in 1A Division I. They're good. I agree They're with you. Very you, good. you can never count Abbott out. You can never count Terry Crawford out. I mean, right. they are state champs for a reason. They go deep into the playoffs for a reason. They won the They're Lone legit. Star Cup in yes. 1A last year. Like, yeah. this doesn't, this isn't a fluke. Not at all. Um, most uh, surprising result of the week, I'm going to go with uh, Temple. Is Weiss, what, this is, I believe, Weiss's first realignment in 6A. I thought Temple would be able to pull away at some point in this one, but they went into the half down 13 to 10 in this one. I watched Weiss last week when they played Harker Heights. Better team than you might want to give them credit for That's when fair. you think of them on paper. Harker Heights wins that game last week, but it wasn't by any means a blowout. I mean, it went straight to the last possession. And Jerry Edwards at the end of it said that was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. So I think Weiss is probably better than people give them credit for and allow Temple an off night from every every once in a while. And to to give Weiss some credit and to explain some geography to you in Texas high school football, Weiss, Weiss is school borders with two other schools that are having pretty good seasons. One of them is Hutto and the other one is Maynard. Three schools in the Austin area having a pretty good stretch of football yeah. right now. Uh, Nicole, who, what was your most surprising result tonight or this week? When you said that Shoemaker lost, my mouth dropped uh, standing out here on the sideline. I'm, they were on the win train. They had some big wins, Lake Belt and Ellison. I mean, they were hitting that train good, and that's surprising to me. A really tight game, but I'm surprised. That could turn into a three-way tie for second place in 4-5A Division I. Midlothian remains unbeaten in district play, has not yet played Definitely. Lake Belton. Uh, Lake Belton has a district loss to Shoemaker, which is lost to both Midlothian and Red Oak right now, but Lake Belton beat Red Oak. So if you have your cork board and can follow along with it, you'll I understand about along. as little of that district <laughs> as I do right now. And I nerd out on this I stuff. Can't, I was about to say, you're losing me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how much of a mess that district is. Oh, and by the way, Ellison is sitting right there underneath <laughs> those top four, uh, ready to pounce on any playoff opportunities that come their way. Your most surprising result. I'm going to go with Midway Harker Heights. Yes. I mean, Midway takes a loss, but gosh, they kept it really close. Their defense one. is really legit. And listen, they won one. They win one game last year. They've got their first win out of the way this year. Shane Anderson is trying to build this thing up, and on his birthday, he wanted to win. He didn't get it. But to keep this as close as it was against the Harker Heights team that is going to go toe to toe with Temple this year, deep into the playoffs as well. I was really impressed that Midway was able to hang around on in this one on the road as well. I really hope that Shane can have a better weekend because on his birthday, he had to buy his own breakfast with his son and then he well, what, suffered his first loss inside the Buckley what, Stadium. What age is his son? I mean, I he's six. I don't think he's pulling out the wallet. That's, I don't think that's, that's something that makes a bad that, birthday. That's right? Matt, birthday. Matt wouldn't sing him happy birthday. That's also true. <laughs> Matt Lively Shane is Shane Anderson might have punched me out. Shane Anderson might have punched <laughs> me out had I sang him happy birthday Marilyn Monroe style on air. <laughs> Would have made for great television. Hey, if you're going to go see a movie that Marilyn Monroe is in. I'm going to the yes. theater. The what now? The theater. How he can you trust fun. a sports man that doesn't know how to say theater? It's the off theater. topic, but I wanted to bring this up. Whatever. <laughs> theater. Um, let's pivot to tomorrow's game. I was uh, waiting for this Rob, to come up. Can we I was get waiting. a wide <laughs> shot of the studio as we start talking about the Baylor game real quick. We do have some guests with us in the studio tonight. <laughs> uh, that is the interim director of the Oklahoma State University School of Media and Strategic Communications, one of the most influential professors in my life. He brought six students with him to Central Texas. You only see three here. The other three are in the control room at the moment and they switched at the live stream. They're kind of in the studio hanging out. This, they host a show called The Poke Report that I anchored when I was in school. I say all of that 
to pivot to tomorrow's game. Oh, here they Number, come. There are the come, other yeah. three. <laughs> here they here come the surging other three. in. Getting their TV time on Channel 6. In fact, you have one from the Austin area. Sorry, our signal doesn't reach that far south. Uh, but let's move on to the game. It is one of the most intriguing games in college football tomorrow, and it's in our backyard. Somebody decided to go to a concert instead of the game tomorrow. It is number 9, Oklahoma State. It is number 16, Baylor, 2.30 p.m. kick tomorrow Typical. from McLean Stadium. And guys... <laughs> I think quarterback plays the biggest key to this one because I don't know what I don't know what I think about either of these two quarterbacks. Let's start with Nicole. Nicole, what, what is your kind of big key or big takeaway that Baylor needs tomorrow? So the key is containing Spencer Sanders. In the three years that he's played, he's thrown 21 interceptions. Nine of those have come against a Dave Aranda defense. Guys, that's that's unbelievable to me. If Baylor alum, can have his number tomorrow, higher, it's a Bears slide. win. <laughs> Nine against a, Bay a Dave Aranda defense, and in one of those games they won like, what, 45 to 13? I'm pretty sure Spencer Sanders is from the DFW area. I he was is. Dent Ryan. Yeah, so I was wondering last year during the Big 12 championship game, and I actually tweeted this out, is he a secret Baylor fan? Because he was only throwing <laughs> to the opposition, and these Oklahoma State students do not like that one bit. But I will say, Spencer Sanders has a kryptonite, and it is the Baylor Bears so far. We've seen excellent defensive play. Yeah. Uh, you know, Baylor goes on the road last week in Ames, and they really contain what was a really good offense so far for Iowa State. Yeah. Can they do it this time? My big question is, they finally let Blake shape and take the reins last week. Will they do that again, or is the run game going to become the focal point once again? And can Richard Grease, a freshman, perform on that big stage? Right, because this is the best team that Baylor has faced so far this season. Big time. Big time. I mean, yes, BYU is good, but we saw BYU struggle with a really bad Utah State team Oklahoma last State night. Oklahoma State is a fringe college football playoff team. I know you probably don't like me saying that, but... Yes. Who, who, who else is going to go above them at this point? I mean, <laughs> if you're in the top ten at this point in the season, you're, you're automatically in that conversation. To me, the biggest key is Blake Shapin, but for a different reason. The last time this offense saw a unit like this, it struggled. 14 penalties for 117 yards at BYU, and somehow they're still throwing for the end zone to win it at the end of the game in double overtime. This offense cannot have pre-snap penalties tomorrow. The home environment will help with that. Yeah. Uh, but here's the other thing. If you watched this week's Big 12 breakdown with myself and John Morris, we looked at each other and said, what is the team that we know the least about coming out of non-conference play in the Big 12? Because last week was the final week in non-conference mm. play. He said Oklahoma State. Who's OSU's best win? Central Michigan at this point. And much to your chagrin. I am an Arizona State grad. I don't appreciate was, that. But yeah. we did just fire our head coach, and apparently our assistants are giving away <laughs> all the game plans so Herm Edwards would get fired earlier. So I would agree. Oklahoma State has not been challenged when they were. They gave up 44 to Central Michigan. And when Baylor was challenged, they no. got called for 14 penalties, mostly in the pre-snap. So these are two teams that were are, – it's very much a litmus test tomorrow for both of these teams. Uh, Nicole, your biggest key real quick. we got two minutes left in the show. Also, Oklahoma – Oh, sorry, sorry. I was going to say also Oklahoma State's coming off a bye. So they're coming off some breaks. They haven't been tested like you guys said. It's going to be a home game at Baylor. But I will say it's going to be a quarterback duel is really what it comes down to. Sanders has thrown 10 touchdowns. He's only had one interception so far this season. So maybe it's going to be different this year with the whole with his interceptions. I guess we're going to find out tomorrow. Matt, your biggest key. Uh, I've said Kim Blake Shapin in this offense prove once again, that they can get the job done. They faced the best run defense in the Big 12 last week. They had no run game, but Blake Shapin proved that he could get it done That's with true. his arm. And so can, can Jeff Grimes dice it up again? And Drake Dabney proved that he needs to be on the track team. Yes. Um, okay, real quick picks. I'm taking Baylor in a close one, but the only thing that surprises me in this one is a blowout. Nicole, go ahead. Uh, I'm taking Baylor. Baylor by three. I'm going to say home atmosphere. The Bears were so good at McLean Stadium last year. They get wins over Texas. They get wins over Oklahoma. It transferred this year. I've got Baylor. We sound like homers. I don't care. You can take it up with uh, our email, Curtis or Quillen at KCNTV.com. You can. Yes. And uh, my, I, I'm, I think my professor is yes. trying to find a way to take my degree away yes. from me six years later. <laughs> All right, Nicole, we'll see you tomorrow at the stadium, Matt. Enjoy your concert. That is our time for week six of the 2022 Texas high school football season. For Matt Lively, Nicole Sheeran, Ethan Clark, Rob Kelso, Michael Graham, all of us working the late shift here at 6 News. We say so long. We'll see you next week under the lights.